Hello children. How are you? Hope you are fine and enjoying your classes. So today we shall be talking to you about principles of inheritance and variation chapter 5 of your NCERT textbook 12th biology and under this topic we shall be taking up Mendel's dihybrid cross and the law of independent assortment. From monohybrid cross we have got a law that is what he call as law of segregation. From dihybrid cross we shall get a very beautiful law that is given by Gregor Mendel after conducting his experiment that is the law of independent assortment. So before we discuss about the law of independent assortment, we shall have to know the dihybrid cross in detail. Let us know what do you mean by dihybrid cross. When two pairs of contrasting character are taken in consideration for cross breeding experiment, that type of cross we call dihybrid cross. Is it very clear? In monohybrid cross we have seen a single pair of contrasting character taken into consideration. Tall with dwarf or red with white. That is a single pair of contrasting character. Contrasting is just contrast. Red contrast is white. Or tall with contrast is dwarf. A single pair of character. Here in dihybrid cross we shall take in consideration two pairs of contrasting character at a time. So let me give an example of a round sheep, a round sheep produced by pea plant. Most of the experiment of Mendel was based on garden pea plant. So the round seed versus a wrinkled seed. So, this is a single pair of contrasting character. If we take round seat versus wrinkle seat. But if we add here one more character that is yellow, yellow color seat, and the green color seat, green color. So here we have taken two pair of characters and they are contrasting. One pair is a round seat, shape of the seat is round versus wrinkle. Another is the seed color is yellow versus green. Here a round is dominant over the wrinkle character, yellow is dominant over the green. So let us take Representing the round here by capital R, capital R. Then the contrasting recessive character is small r, small r for wrinkle. Yellow, if we denote by capital Y, capital Y, then green will be denoted by small y, small y. Why we are writing small y? Because of f. We have represented the dominant character yellow by y. So the, the recessive character is represented by the small alphabet of this capital Y that is small y. Is that clear to you? So two pair of contrasting character we are taking into consideration for the cross breeding. So these are the parents. Parental generation. So suppose this is the male parent, this is the male parent, if we denote by this symbol, and here this is the female parent, that means a male flowering plant with a female flowering plant when they cross it. So before that, gamete produce. Gamut. So both the capital R, capital R, and insert here. So in the gamut, 
upon the elements that means one R will come from capital Y, capital Y, one Y will come in the gamut. Here from the female gamut, one smaller and one small Y will enter the gamut. Now when this two gametes so protein are cross-breded the F1 progeny we are getting here now capital R small r capital Y small y what will be the resultant phenotype this is the genotype F1 genotype, genotype of F1 offspring, F1 offspring. All the F1 offsprings are having a genotype. This is the genotype. And what is the genotype? All the F1 offsprings with this genotype. The resultant phenotype is as capital R is dominant over the small r, so they produce round seed with capital Y is dominant over small y, so the seed color, so round seed with with yellow. color that means if we write in simple form round yellow so all the important progeny are producing a round shape of seed with yellow color of seed that means round is that clear to you? Now, when the F1 progenies are proceed for gamete formation, so the F1 hybrid, F1 hybrid, that is capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. How many types of gamete the F1 hybrid can produce? So gamete formation. Gamete formation. In this case, this capital R, capital R can form a gamete by capital R with capital Y is one type of gamete capital R can combine with small y capital R small y another type of gamete this small r can combine with capital Y so small r capital Y another type of gamete This small r and small y can combine and produce small r, small y type of That means the gamete production here are of four different types. If one hybrid will undergo gamete production, they form four different types of gamete. Capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y. Small and small. These gametes can be male gamete or female gamete. So, when these F1 hybrids are crossed, what will be the result? Let us put this result in the form of a pin square. Otherwise, we will check out. So, let me wrap this part to make certain space. If we 
you make it in a square or a checker board like this. Divide it into four different compartments horizontally and vertically. This one also. And now, suppose this is represented by male gamut and this is represented by female gamut. So all these four can be male gamut. Capital R. So let me take up now. Capital R. Capital Y. Then capital R. Small Y. Then capital small R. Capital Y. And small R. Small Y. Same four types of female gamut can be there. So the let us try the female gamut. Capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y, and small r, small y. Now, when this gamut, fertilize this gamut, the resultant product is capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. When this fertilize with this, result in this capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y. This is the small y. When this fertilize with this, result in this capital R, small r, capital Y, capital Y. This with this. Capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Is that clear to you? Likewise, this when fertilizing this for the fertilizer so gamut, let me write the project, the general, general type of the project. Capital R, with this capital R, small capital Y, first let us write capital Y and small y. Capital Y, small y. Then this with this capital R, capital R, then small y, small y. This with this capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. This with this capital R. Small r, small y, small y. Then this with all the four. So this gamut, we internalize with this gamut. Capital R, then small r, capital y, and small capital y. Capital y, capital y. Then this which is capital R, capital Y, capital R, first capital R, then small r, small r, then capital Y, small y. Then this with this, small r, small r, both are small r, small r, small r, with capital Y. Both are capital Y. Then this with this. Small r. Small r. Capital Y. Small y. Then this with all the four gametes. Cross it. Capital R. This is capital R. Small r. Capital Y. Small y. Is that clear to you? Just cross it. Then this with this, capital R, small r, 
then small y small y small y small y this with this smaller smaller small capital y and small y this with this smaller smaller small y small y these are the 16 genotype we got so how many genotype now let us write how many phenotype we got phenotype so phenotype phenotype around here round green then wrinkled yellow wrinkled green so let us now let us now find out the different types of phenotype we got. Round yellow. Round yellow means at least one capital R will be there and at least one capital Y will be there because capital R is dominant over the smaller and capital Y is dominant over the smaller. So for Becoming a phenotypic expression round and yellow, at least one capital R should be there. If both are there, well and good, at least one should be there. Or yellow to express at least one Y or both cap or one capital Y or both capital Y. So let us find out. So this is one round and yellow. Then this is also round and yellow because one capital Y is there. This is again round and yellow because of this is capital R, small one, R is recessive and both are capital Y. Then this is also round and yellow. This is also round and yellow because both are capital R but one capital Y is there for yellow. Then this is also round and yellow because one capital R is there, one capital Y is there. Then this is not, this is round and yellow. This is also round and yellow. This is not. This is not. This is also round and yellow. This is not. This is not. This is not. So how many round and yellow you got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that clear to you? So you have got total 9 sampling which are round and yellow. Means round seed with yellow seed color. Is that clear? Now let us find out how many are round and green. For becoming round, either one capital R should be there or both are capital. But for becoming green, both should be small y. Is that clear? So let us search by putting a cross. So this is round and green because R capital R is there and small y both are small y so round green so this is cross cross symbol is for round and green then this is also round and green one capital R, capital R is there small r cannot express but both are small y so green so round and green so this is cross then round and green this is not this is not Yes, this is round, one capital R is there, and both are small y, so this is cross. So this is, if we write round, green, this is also round, green, then this is also round, green. So how many of you, how many of the round and green you have got? Three. Is that clear? Then we shall have to find out wrinkled and yellow. 
Wrinkled leaves both should be smaller. Is that very clear? Both should be smaller. But EM means at least one should be capital Y. Either both capital Y or at least one should be capital Y. So let us find out. Both are small or uh, oh, and both are either small capital Y or at least one capital Y. Let us search. Wrinkled and wrinkled. Yes, this is wrinkle green. Put a double tick. Wrinkle green. Sorry, wrinkle yellow. Wrinkle yellow. Both are capital small R. So wrinkle and both are capital Y or at least one capital Y should be there for becoming yellow. So this is wrinkle yellow, right? Wrinkle yellow. Then this is also wrinkled here because both are smaller but one capital Y is there. So wrinkle here. Put a double tick. Wrinkled here. Okay. Then wrinkled here. Yes, this is also wrinkled here. Wrinkled here. Put a double tick. This is not. So how many wrinkled yellow? That is double tick. We have got one, two, and three. So this is three. The remaining is only one. That is a wrinkle. Both are smaller, and both are small. Why is green? That is one. So what is the phenotype we got out of the crossbreeding of F1 gametes in F2 generation we got in F2 so this is the F2 generation we got out of the total sampling in a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 the progeny of F2 where we have got round and yellow seed, round and green seed, wrinkles and yellow color seed, and wrinkles set and green color seed in a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. This is the this is the phenotypic ratio. Is that clear to you? So from dihydric cross, we got the phenotypic ratio in the two generation in the form of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. We can, we can express or explain the dihydric cross in terms of two separate monohydric cross. How? Let us see. So, this you try to remember that in the two generation, the regarded progeny are in a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Now, how can we express the result of dihybrid cross in a combined form by separating two more hybrid cross? Let us see. What are the two pairs of fantastic cattle? We have taken a round and a wrinkle, smaller, smaller. Okay. If we take now a single pair of contrasting character, just like we have done in monohybrid cross, so the gamete, what are the gamete? Capital R, here, small. F1 hybrid, F1 hybrid. Is that clear? Now, this F1 hybrid when undergo gamete formation, gamete, gamete, they will produce two types of gamete, capital R and small r. Is that clear? Now, when this F1 hybrid producing the gamete, these two gamete, male and female, 
by the cross bladed suppose this is male male gamete capital r small r this is female gamete capital r so let me write here let me write this part so that to make little space okay let me write it here also this is male gamete this is a female gamete so two types of gamete produce from a poor hybrid a poor hybrid produce two types of gamete is that clear so the resultant progeny is capital r capital r capital r small r small r capital r is capital r small r this is small r small r that is a round a round this is also round and this is ring here in a ratio what is the ratio 1 2 3 round that is if i write here a round is two ring curl In a ratio of three is to one. Is that clear? Now the same cross with yellow ring. We have taken here the round shape C. Now we are taking the seed color parent. That is yellow color C and green colors so we have conducted a monohybrid cross here with respect to round color C versus ring color C we are conducting another monohybrid cross here that is yellow color C with green color C this is yellow this is green so the gamut produced that is all here yellow and here all are green now if one hybrid when cross breeded this gamut capital Y small y all are yellow okay that is the theorem now when the F1 hybrid undergo gamut formation They will produce two types of gamut. What are these two types of gamut? One with capital Y, one with small y. Now, if this F1 hybrid which produces two types of gamut, if this gametes male and female are now crossbreded, what will be the progeny? Let us write here. So, let me write here, this is the male suppose, this is the female gamut, male gamut are two types, capital Y, small y, female gamut again are two types, with capital Y with small y. Now this, when this female gamete and male gamete are cross breeded, the this male gamete is fertilized the female gamete, it is the resultant product is capital Y, capital Y. This with this, that is capital Y, small y. This with this, that is capital Y, small y. And this small y with small y, that is small y, small y. This is yellow. This is also yellow. This is also yellow. This is also, this is 
This is green. Both are small ones. So what is the resultant ratio of F2? F2 result, F2 progeny, yellow versus green. Yellow how many are? 3. Green how many are? Only 1. So, the resultant product is just monohybrid cross we have done for Mendelian that is 3 is to 1. Now, if we multiply these two results of two different monohybrid cross, that means, what are the, so let me wrap it here. Let me wrap this part. Just remember the ratio of monohybrid cross here. Very beautifully you can remember how this cross is a multiplication of these two single monohybrid cross. So what are the around around how many are there? Three. A wrinkle. How many are there? One. When this are multiplied by or this are multiplied by yellow. Yellow, how many are there? Three. Yellow, three. Green, one. Yellow, three. Green, one. So, multiply this round with yellow. That is round yellow. This round when multiplied with yellow, this result is round and yellow. 3 into 3 means 9. When yellow multiply with the wrinkle, so is to yellow and wrinkle. This is 3 into 1 means 3. is to now this so this we have multiplied with this and this now this one round multiply with green so round green around three multiplied by green one three in one three and then the green multiplied with wrinkle that is wrinkle Green, wrinkle, green. One into one will be one. So this dihybrid cross, the result what we got in F2 generation was 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. When the two monohybrid cross of the same character we have taken and separately done. And then the resultant product of just two monohybrid cross by taking same type of character around the wrinkle in one hand and the yellow green in the other hand, and the product of now three to one of yellow versus green and round versus wrinkle are multiplied again. We are getting the same nine to three to three to one. So by the time we could come to know that. The product that is phenotype of a two generation of a dihybrid cross we are getting in the form of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. Is that very clear to you? I suppose you got a very very clear concept. As I have given you at a time the two pairs of the stick are taken and they have to generate the product and I have shown you how the single pair of contrasting characters separately the result 3 to 1 are then multiplied and got this. Is that clear? Now we shall come to the concept of Mendel diabetic cross and law. So we have discussed the Mendel diabetic cross. 
and then law of independent solve. In F1 generation, in F1 generation, if I run this part, in F1 generation, we have seen around. Let us take a pink, round, yellow, with wrinkled green. Once again, wrinkled green. If one, the gamut, this is the pairing. Parental generation, gamut, we have got capital R, capital Y, and here small, small R, and small Y. And in the, in the F1 hybrid, hybrid, we got capital R, small R, capital Y, small Y. When this F1 hybrid produces a gamut, what we have seen? The capital R can combine with capital Y or capital R can combine with small y, small r can combine with capital Y or small r can combine with small y small r small y we have taken a parent where the parent capital R capital R capital Y capital that means round and yellow versus wrinkled and green. But when we see that F1 gamut, round allele or round character carrying gene can form a combination with yellow color forming gene or factor as far as Round can combine with green, wrinkle can combine with yellow, or wrinkle can combine with green. That means with which allele it will combine, with which allele it will form a combination that is independent of the allele present in the parental generation. That is the assorting of the allele in the gamut is independent of their parental combination. This is what we call as law of independent assorting. So from this diabetic cross, Mendel came to a very beautiful conclusion that is that alleles are assorted independently without keeping any concern about their corresponding allele in parental generation. Is that clear to you? That is why we have seen in F2 generation a round has combined with yellow, a round has combined with yellow to give a round yellow, round shade yellow seed color round has combined with green to form a round shape green color set yellow where it was earlier with round shape seed now it has combined with wrinkle set where green was earlier with wrinkle but here green has combined also with the round shape seed. Here in a ratio of 1 
out of 16 we have seen wrinkle combining with so the combination of with which allele the other contrasting allele will move that is purely independent they are not depending upon the allele as it is in their parental combination this is what we call as law of independent assembly which Mendel derived from his dihydric cross is that clear to you? so I suppose that you got a very clear concept about dihydric cross the purity the ratio in F1 generation and F2 generation and how the dihydric cross can be mingled by separately taking two monohybrid cross and from there how we could can you know the law of independent assortment it means how the allelic genes are assorted independently without keeping any concern about their counter with this we shall stop today thank you